All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below so that you can follow along. Today's exercise comes from the QBO Gym. The QBO Gym is a practice set of exercises that gives you the actual experience of being a bookkeeper. So as you can see here, inside the QBO Gym, we're organized by month. Every month you get a new set of exercises. And today we're gonna be going through our February warmups. So if I click warmups, Okay, you see um, each section starts with a little animated video that tells you a little bit about what's going on in Craig's business this month. After the video, there's a little quiz, um, and then we have the uh, individual exercises. So we already did this first exercise here, so I'm gonna click that, you get a little ka-ching, and then now we're gonna be working on our second exercise, which is um, about PayPal. So let's go ahead and read our scenario. Scenario. Craig also sold a fountain pump on his online store. The online customer paid via PayPal and PayPal charged a 3% fee. Craig has already transferred the money to his checking account. Let's see how we would record this. Okay, so we are going to start in the sample company. I should have said that first. Um, of course, if you don't know how to get your free QuickBooks Online Accountant account or you don't know how to get, your, uh, get access to the free sample company where you can play around, links about that are below. Okay, so here we are in the sample company and um, step one, there are several ways to record online sales. This is only one. In a real life scenario, you will need to take into account the entirety of your client's situation. For example, if Craig also makes purchases via a PayPal account, okay, so in this scenario that we're working on right now, he's just received a payment, but what if he also uses PayPal to send payments? Okay, and then sometimes uses the PayPal balance to make those. You would need to set up PayPal as a bank account that money flows into and out of. In this exercise, however, we're going to assume that Craig only uses PayPal to receive payments and he does not have an e-commerce store such as Shopify. In this case, you can use a sales receipt to record both the sale and the fee. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna click plus new and then select sales receipt. So here I am in my sample company. I'm gonna click plus new and select sales receipt. Going back to the exercise while that's loading, step two. Craig does not need to keep track of all the individual customer names for his online sales. This is already available in PayPal. Instead, we'll create a PayPal sales customer. In a real life scenario, you could then use this customer for all future PayPal sales records, okay? So in the customer field, we're gonna enter PayPal sales, then click add new PayPal sales, okay? So we're gonna type in the customer, PayPal sales, and I should have clicked add new, I clicked tab, but it did the same thing. <laughs> so anyway, so here we are creating our new customer. And then step three, there's nothing else about this new customer that you need to track. So we're gonna click save. Okay, going back to our exercise, step four. Craig has already deposited the money into the checking account, so you will need to select this account under deposit two. Uh, so we're gonna click the deposit to drop down arrow and select checking. Okay, so right here, deposit to checking. Okay, in step five, in the product service field, we're gonna add uh, the pump, and then you'll see that the description, the quantity and rate will automatically populate. That comes from our products and services list. Okay, so we're gonna um, go in here, we're gonna type in pump. Okay, and here's the description, the quantity and the rate automatically populated. Now in our case, we just sold one, so we're just gonna leave that as one. Uh, step six, okay, next you will need to create a product service item to track the PayPal fees. In the product service field, type PayPal fee, then click plus add new PayPal fee, okay? So of course you only have to do this the first time 
Once you create it once, you'll be able to use it for future transactions. Not in the sample company because it resets, but in real life, you'd be able to do that. So we're going to click plus add new PayPal fee. Okay, going back to our exercise, step seven. Now we're going to click service. This could also be a non-inventory field. Either one works. Okay, and then step eight. In the income account field, click the drop down arrow and select bank charges. Then we're going to click save and close. Okay, so even though it's income, even though it's a, an expense, the bank charges, we're still going to use the income account field here. So, uh, which I say bank charges. Okay, so I'm going to select bank charges, then I'm going to click save and close. Okay, going back to our exercise, step nine. In a real life scenario, you would be able to see the amount of the fee in the PayPal transaction. For this exercise, let's use QBO to do the math for the 3% fee. In the rate column, type 15 times negative 0.03. That's 15, which is the price of the pump, times negative, this is a fee, so it's gonna reduce the total amount of the sales receipt, and then 0 0.03, which is 3%. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here, and I'm going to put in, did I say the rate or the amount field? Uh, in the rate column, either one works. I just wanna make sure I'm matching the, matching the exercise, okay? So we're gonna type in 15, times negative 0 0.0, not O, 0, 3. And then when I tab, click tab to get out of it, it'll automatically do the calculation to subtract 45 cents, okay? So that's 3% of $15. Again, in a real life scenario, you would, wouldn't have to do the math. PayPal will just give you the amount for the fee but this is just a good way to show you that you can do math inside the, these uh, grids in PayPal. I mean, in QuickBooks Online. All right, so steps 10 through 12, click tab to exit the field and notice QBO calculates the fee as 45 cents, negative 45 cents, so that's what we just did right here, okay? We will not be working with sales tax in this exercise, so uncheck both, ta uh, both tax checkboxes. Okay, so we're gonna go here, we're gonna uncheck that one, and we're gonna uncheck that one. Okay, going back to our exercise. Okay, now that the fee has been applied and the tax has been removed, the total is reduced to $14.55. That's what we saw right here, $14.55. Fifty-five cents. Also, you can see the subtotal down there. Okay, click save and close. If necessary, click the arrow first to open the choices. Okay, so we don't have to click the arrow; it's automatically there. And that's it. All right, and that's it for this exercise. Next up, let's process the checks that came in for Craig this month. See you there.